Todd for G66. Welcome to another Tuesday Tone Tip. On today's video, I want to break down an FM3 preset that I've been using with this guitar, a Music Man JP7, for some acoustic gigs that I've been doing recently. And I know what you're thinking, an electric guitar for acoustic gigs, what's going on there? I'm really fortunate that this guitar has the under saddle piezo style acoustic on it so that if I want to, I can get an acoustic style sound using these under saddle pickups on here. So if you've got a guitar like that, play along and I'll show you how to dial in a cool preset. Of course, I've got the ability to use the onboard magnetic pickups as you would have heard this guitar a few times on the channel before. Let's talk about the routing first though. So I have two separate guitar cables coming out of this guitar. One for the under saddle acoustic pickup, which is going to input two on my FM3 down here. And you can see I've got a parametric EQ, a multi-band compressor, and a volume block processing that part of the guitar sound. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. And then my main magnetic pickup sound is going to input one. It's going through the JFET compressor, pretty much stock settings except for the level, which is up to 3 dB. The Band Commander amp model, which is at stock settings, then I'm using my go-to LT TV Mix 7 cabinet IR, a little bit of low cut and high cut in there. That's going through a delay, which is bypass at the moment, a volume and pan block, and all of that is going through the Rich Hall reverb. So what I wanna do is just quickly showcase the electric and the acoustic part of this sound individually. And you'll notice there's those volume blocks on there. I have an expression pedal at my feet, which is letting me blend between these two sounds. So let's hear the electric and then the acoustic. Now, I will freely admit that is not the most amazing acoustic guitar style tone you are ever gonna get, but I am kind of never amazed by any piezo style pickup on an electric guitar or an acoustic guitar. It's inherently a compromise when it comes to tone, but I feel like you get more than that back in terms of playability and flexibility. So this has been doing the job totally fine. If you really wanna dive down into getting a great acoustic guitar sound, I would highly recommend Cooper Carter's video on the topic, which I will link in the video description. There's some great tips. I've stolen some of them for this here. So the electric part of the sound is pretty self-explanatory. I feel like I've covered this in several other videos. I love the Band Commander for a clean sound. Uh, we've got the vintage digital delay in there if I want it on. And I've even dialed in a second channel on the amp here, of course, using the USA lead mid gain. So if I want to use this and I want to use the delay together, I can have a lead sound on top of all of this. <laughs> So that's super satisfying, but uh, let's be slightly more responsible for the rest of the video. I'll just keep this clean sound on here. So what I'm gonna first talk about is how I am blending between this row, my electric row, and the acoustic row down here. And I'm using two volume and pan blocks in here. So if I look at the first one on here, if I right click the modifier, you can see I've got my expression pedal connected to pedal number one, and it is just set up at default so that when I go heel down, this particular part of the chain is gonna to be totally turned off and toe down where I've got it at the moment is gonna be on maximum. And you can see that just rocking back and forth there. Now, when I want my acoustic sound on full, I want my electric sound on a minimum and vice versa. So in the second volume and pan block, if I right click the modifier here, you can see it's assigned to the same pedal, but I have flipped these minimum and maximum values on there. So when I'm toe down like I am right now, this particular part of the chain is on zero. If I go heel down, it's gonna come all the way up and you can see that in real time. Very, very cool. Now. Another use case, which I'm not doing at the moment, but if you wanted the acoustic 
style sound to go to its own channel on the mixing desk and the electric sound to go to its own channel. All you'd have to do is come in here and pan one of them right and use the corresponding output on the FM3 and pan the other one to the left and use the corresponding output on the FM3. So that's kind of a cool way to have two separate channels and do some outboard processing as you would expect. But I want all of this in a single preset. So I've done a few little tweaks in here. The main one is this parametric EQ block for the acoustic style sound in here. What I'm gonna do is bypass this first so you can hear what the under saddle pickup on this guitar sounds like. And it's a little bit boomy and a little bit harsh as all these kind of pickups are. <laughs> So without that parametric EQ, it is pretty unpleasant. Basically what I've done is I've ran a loop into this with this particular guitar. You can use the looper block if you like. And then I've used the parametric EQ solo feature to just find all the offensive frequencies in there. For example, you can hear this 205 Hertz region is really mucky sounding. So I've gone ahead and cut out about 5 dB with a high Q on here. Around 1200 Hertz is another region with under saddle pickups where you get some just kind of unpleasant mid range. And the other big offending frequency is around four to five K where you're gonna get the pick attack really come through. I've also used a high shelf in here to just pull out some extreme high end and a low cut in here to take out some extreme low end. So again, let's just hear the difference with the parametric EQ on and bypass. It's still not the most amazing acoustic style tone I've ever heard, but it is far more usable and far more pleasant. The other big trick in here is using a multi-band compressor. And again, I'll refer you to Cooper Carter's video on this. They go far more into depth on these settings, but you can see in here, I've split this into three different bands. We have below 90 Hertz and above 1400 Hertz. We can compress them all differently, but more importantly, we can use the level controls in here as a three band EQ for our tone. And in fact, what I've done is I've assigned these to the perform page on the FM3. You can see the reverb mix and then the low, mid and high level from the multiband in here. I can have on the perform page and I can have instant access to fine tune those. So I've just kind of found that, yeah, tweaking the threshold so that I get, you know, maybe like 6 dB, 9 dB of gain reduction on each band and then compensating by turning them up really gives it a nice kind of polished feel. And I will match the levels in post on this because the multiband is kind of boosting this quite a lot, but I'll let you hear it with and without. Using the two volume and pan blocks in there, I can blend between these two sounds. Another little tip, in the volume and pan blocks, you'll see that I've set the volume taper to linear. What this is gonna do is if I'm in the middle of the sweep of the expression pedal, it's gonna have the volume of the acoustic and the electric at the same level, which will not necessarily be the case if you're using a different volume taper. Let's hear it. One last little tip, try the tape distortion between your parametric EQ and your multiband. I've just turned the level up to seven on it. This can be a cool way to basically get a slightly warmer, more vintage style acoustic tone out of this under saddle pickup. <laughs> simply organize these into two scenes, one that I've called strum, that just has the clean guitar amp and the core acoustic tone. And then on scene two, I've got the USA lead mid gain for my lead sound with the vintage digital delay on there and the acoustic part of the grid remains the same. So I'm gonna place this particular preset up on Axchange for anyone who would like to try it. If you have any further questions, let me know in the comments section below. And if you've got any suggestions, 
For future Tuesday Tone Tips, also let me know in the comments. All the links that I've talked about will be in the video description as well. Have a great week and I'll see you next Tuesday for another Tone Tip. Enjoy.